Hey, Lauren. This weekend is Christmas, and we're going to have a reunion party, remember? It's going to be a big event, with all of our relatives and friends coming over. I've been planning and preparing for this for months, and I need everything to be perfect. Of course I remember, Mom. This is a very important party for our family. I am very excited to participate. I can't wait to see everyone and celebrate the holidays together. And this is also probably the last Christmas when my family is only two people. I mean, next Christmas, we'll have another family member, haha. <laughs> you know, our little angel who's kicking inside me right now. Anyways, I'm sure Carter and I will be there soon. Oh, that's good. When you come, I have a lot of things to ask for your help with. Carter has been working hard the past few months to earn money to support you and the baby. I'm sure he will need some time off. That's why I'm looking forward to your help. You know how much I appreciate you, right? Why don't you ask Linda? She has a lot of free time. She's always telling me how bored she is at home and how she wishes she has something to do. Maybe she could use some of your guidance and wisdom, Mom. You're so good at organizing and hosting parties, after all. Come on, don't be silly, Lauren. Linda is just as busy as Carter. She has a demanding job as a lawyer, and she's always working on some important case or project. She barely has time for herself, let alone for us. Besides, you're the sister-in-law, so you should do everything and not expect Linda or Carter to help you. That's how it works in our family. We women have to take care of everything at home, while the men focus on their careers. That's how it's always been, and that's how it should be. Of course, I understand. I'm always willing to help out others, but I'm not sure if I can do much this time around. I'm feeling very tired and exhausted lately, Mom. You know how hard pregnancy can be, especially in the last month. I was hoping you would understand. Oh my, we can't be having that. I am your mother-in-law. You're not planning on disobeying me, are you? You know what happens when you disobey me, don't you? You don't want me to get angry with you, do you? No, I would never. It's just that, I'm sure you've heard about my pregnancy, right? I'm in my final month right now. So what? Are you saying you want to slack off just because you're pregnant? That's no excuse, Lauren. You should be grateful that you're pregnant in the first place. Do you know how lucky you are to have a husband like Carter, who loves you and supports you? Do you know how much I've sacrificed for this family? And this is how you repay me? By being lazy and ungrateful? Please, let me explain. Last month, I had to stay at the hospital for a while because the doctors were worried that I might have a condition called threatened premature birth. So far, it seems like everything will be fine as long as I make sure to keep myself healthy and rested. But it's still a risky situation, Mom. The doctors told me that any stress or exertion could trigger early labor or cause complications for me or the baby. They advised me to avoid any strenuous activities and take it easy until the delivery date. I'm sorry I can't help you out as much this time, but I hope you understand. I don't understand the thing you're saying. But, Monica, you're married to Carter. You're now both Carter's wife and my daughter, and we need all the help we can get. I will not have someone like you just laying back while her husband and mother does all the work. You didn't get married to slack off. You know I won't allow such a thing. Now, do you remember your role here in our family, young lady? Or do I need to further explain myself? I think you're misunderstanding me, Monica. Of course I'll be helping out, as usual. I'll do everything I can. But there's going to be a limit to how much I can push myself this time. So I just wanted you to know that I might not be able to help you out as much as last time. It's for the safe delivery of our child. We don't want anything to happen to her. And we don't want to push her luck, either. I mean... I don't know what I'll do if something happened to the baby. I'm sure you don't want her to be in harm's way either, right? It's not my concern. Nothing will happen to the baby as long as you make sure you're being responsible enough. But on the off chance you do harm the baby, well, I suppose sometimes you're just unlucky. But it's not that hard to get impregnated, so I suggest you just get pregnant again. We're still expecting to see our first grandkids someday. And just because you might fall as a mother once, doesn't mean that we should also be punished by not being able to meet them anymore. Hold on, Monica. What do you mean, sometimes you're just unlucky? It's not just about bad luck. It's about being careful and making sure the baby is safe. I hope I'm wrong, but you sound as if you think our baby is replaceable. 
This child will be the one and only first grandchild. At least that's what I'm praying for. And that's why I'm asking you to understand, so that you might go easy on me. Go easy on you? Are you implying that I'm pushing you around? That I'm being harsh or unreasonable with you? Well, you kind of did do that before. Remember that one time when I didn't exactly do as I was told? You shoved me to the floor and I got bruised. I know you're not always like that, but on the off chance that you're not feeling too cheerful? Well, I don't want to risk it. That's why I'm telling you about my condition and hoping you'll understand. The doctors told me that I really shouldn't push myself. That includes carrying heavy objects and running around for errands. I'm sorry. I can't help out much, but please, I need your understanding. And I said that I don't understand. But, okay, what's throwing you off? If you tell me, I'll try to explain it in more detail. That's not what I mean. I mean, I don't understand why I have to listen to your petty request. Petty request? So what if you're feeling a bit under the weather? Every woman gets pregnant one day, you know, but they don't complain about it. And they certainly do not suspend their role as a wife and mother. They manage it. Why should you get special treatment just because you're on your last month of pregnancy? I say that you're being dramatic, or perhaps even a bit self-absorbed. You selfish little girl. I don't think I agree with that. As I said, I have a condition. Maybe under normal circumstances I could do a bit more. But I was hospitalized, and the doctor specifically told me to be careful. Please. I promise I'll do my usual load once I give birth to our daughter. It's just this once. Please, Monica. No. I stand by my word when I said that I don't understand why I should be listening to your whining. It's not like you even come over that much. You're a guest, and we're being generous enough to take you in. Shouldn't you be in your best manners? If I were you, I'd be making sure to do all the help I can. As I previously said, I will. I'll do everything to the best of my current abilities, but there's a limit and I can't do as much this time. Then are you trying to say that I usually force you to do more than necessary? The nerve of you! Listen to yourself. I can't believe you'd imply such a horrendous thing. No, no, of course not. It's just that I care so much about our baby. I don't want her to have any complications. It's also the first time I'm pregnant, so I want to be extra cautious. I want to make sure everything goes fine. Please, you've been pregnant before. Why don't you understand? Oh, so now I'm the villain here, aren't I? I get it. That's what I can't stand about you. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'll make sure to teach you a thing or two about manners. Be prepared. I'm looking forward to this weekend. What do you mean? Please, I can't handle too much this weekend. I've told you this countless times already, Mom. Monica, are you listening? I'll be home soon, darling. How are you holding up today? I hope you're feeling well and comfortable. Make sure to get some rest. As usual, I'll handle the cooking and cleaning. Do you have any cravings tonight? If not, I'm thinking of making lasagna. I think you'll love it. Carter, can I confide in you? Sure thing. Is something troubling you? You sound a bit worried or upset. It's about this weekend. I'm feeling a bit nervous. I know it's supposed to be a fun and festive occasion, but I can't help but feel anxious about it. This weekend? Oh right, the visit to my parents' house. Don't fret, it's just a small family get-together, so it won't last too long. It'll be over before you know it, and then we can go back to our cozy home and relax. And if you start feeling unwell, you can always head to the guest room and relax. And you don't have to help out around the house like usual. You always do so much for us, but you shouldn't feel obligated to do that. Especially this time. But is your mom aware of that? Of course she is. I told her that you're 9 months pregnant already. And she gave birth to me, so she should understand how tough it is to carry a child in your womb. She should remember how exhausting and painful it can be, especially in the last month. Besides, there is also that talk that we had at the hospital. We should tell her about that too. I'm sure she'll take good care of you this time. I attempted to tell her about it a few minutes ago, but I don't think she comprehends it. Or maybe she doesn't approve of me resting. 
And there's also that incident that happened before, so I'm feeling uneasy. You mean when she knocked you to the floor? I don't know about that, Lauren. She said it was an accident. That's what she told you and your dad. But did she ever apologize to me after that? Or show any remorse or regret for what she did? I don't want to blame her for anything. But I think she was aware of what she did. The doctors told me to stay relaxed and avoid any pressure or exertion. But I'm scared that if she thinks I'm being idle, she'll get mad again. Well, I see your concern. I don't know what actually happened between you two, but I guess it's true that you got hurt that day. We don't want that to happen again. Alright, if you're feeling anxious, do you want me to tell my mom to be more gentle around you? Could you? That would be awesome, Carter. Anything for you, darling. Remember, no matter what happens, I'll always be by your side to help you out. And we can't risk our children getting harmed. Better safe than sorry. Make sure you don't get too stressed either. If there's anything else you need from me, just tell me. You can always count on me, darling. I'm here for you, always and forever. I'm so glad you're such a supportive partner, Carter. Thank you. I'll do my best to keep our baby safe. Lauren, where did you run off to again? Get back to work. Those dishes won't clean themselves. Are you planning to leave them in the sink all night? Or are you expecting me to do them for you? Ugh, how many times do I have to teach you how to be a good daughter-in-law? Come back here and clean up all the dishes. And don't give me any excuses. You're such a letdown, Lauren. Monica, please stop. Don't you have anything else to say? Don't you realize what you've done? What? If there is something you want to say, why don't you just spit it out? Don't beat around the bush and test my patience, Lauren. I've told you that I can't overwork myself. I even reminded you when we got here. But you still acted as though you can push me around. You made me do all your chores. And maybe that wouldn't be so bad. But then when I sat on the couch for a minute to rest, you kicked me in the stomach. I can't believe you. I don't know what to say. You're crazy, Monica. I think you're actually insane. Well, if I'm insane, then I guess you must be psychotic. What did you tell Carter behind my back? Because now he thinks that I've been unfair to you. What nonsense story did you make up, huh? Why would you do that? I didn't make anything up. I just told him the truth about what happened. Do you even understand that I'm at the hospital right now? Have you seen the shock on everyone's faces when they saw what happened? They were shocked because you were arrogant enough to slack off during our family reunion. And now you're sent off to the hospital, so I suppose that's even more time for you to run away from work. I didn't do anything wrong, lady. You should be ashamed of yourself. I can't believe it. Do you actually believe anything you're saying? And even after all you've done, there's not even a hint of apology. I don't think you feel any remorse either, right? I'm appalled. I knew you didn't like me, but I didn't think you would actually be such a horrible person. I see what's happening here. You're blaming me again? You think I'm in the wrong? Well, let me give you a piece of my mind then. Because you're just being lazy and selfish again. Really? What is wrong with you? Lauren, I've never met such an ungrateful, selfish girl in my life. If anyone should be apologizing, it should be you. Think of all the trouble you've caused me. Think of all the stress I've been putting up with. Being pregnant is no excuse for slacking off. Not in my household. No one gave you permission to take a break. If you don't want to get kicked in the stomach, then you shouldn't have been lazy. You deserved it. That's it. I can't take this anymore. That was the last straw, Monica. I thought I should be nice because you're my mother-in-law. But I was wrong. I won't forgive you for what you did, Monica. I hope you regret your choice and all of your past actions because there's going to be some bad news for you. <laughs> Ridiculous! Why would I need forgiveness from you? What are you planning now? Monica, you kicked me in the stomach when there was still a baby in my womb. We had to call an ambulance. I'm in the hospital because of what you did. But not only are you not worried about me or offering me an apology, you're accusing me of deserving it? It's the truth. Don't pretend you don't know that. I see. 
You still stand by everything you've done. What's worse is that you haven't even bothered to check if the baby is alright. You're a monster. I'm sure the baby is fine. You won't be able to see her anymore. Oh, well, it's not my fault. And make sure you tell everyone that it's not my fault. Don't get me wrong, the baby is fine. But you and I will never be seeing each other again. Naturally, the baby won't see you either. I can't risk it. She's safe? God, you scared me for a second. She's my grandchild, Morin. I will be seeing her. In fact, I'll bring her up. Don't worry. She'll be in good hands. I don't think so. I'm shocked, Mom. I didn't think that you were that kind of person. Were you always like this? Is it because you and Lauren aren't technically related? Excuse me? I thought you were just hard on Lauren because you were training her to get used to parenting. That's what you told me at least. That was a lie, wasn't it? And I bought it. I was so stupid. I'm sorry that I didn't believe everything Lauren said sooner. But now I know what was really going on. Carter? Is that you? What are you doing with Lauren's phone? She showed me and all the things you've been saying to her. Really, Mom? Honestly, I can't believe it. I still don't want to believe it. But I can't risk you hurting her anymore now that I finally know you were much harder than her than I ever imagined. It's unforgivable, Mom. I'm sorry, but it just is. No. Please, this is all a misunderstanding. I can explain everything later, but you have to trust me. I'm your mother, and you know how much I loved you when you were growing up. I would never hurt your daughter or Lauren on purpose. I was just trying to help them, to teach them, to make them better. I was just doing what a mother should do. Please, don't listen to Lauren. She's lying to you. She's trying to turn you against me. I don't think I believe you, Mom. Unlike the last time you assaulted Lauren, I saw what happened today. We all saw what you did. There's no excuse. I don't want to think that you're my mother anymore. To be honest, I'm really ashamed. I don't think I even want to see your face anymore. So I'll probably cut ties with you like Lauren. Just so you know, you've gone too far, Mom. You can't be serious. You're being fooled by that woman. You can't just leave your mother. You're my son, my flesh and blood, Carter. And you're the only thing that matters to me in this world. You can't just abandon me like this. Why not? You didn't act like a mother should when you kicked a pregnant woman in the stomach. You didn't act like a grandmother should when you didn't care about the baby's well-being. I don't want my daughter around you. I don't think it's safe for her. If you could kick a pregnant woman without hesitation, then who knows what else you could do to a baby. You think I'd kick a baby? Don't be ridiculous. The baby was fine. Nothing happened. There shouldn't be any consequences. You're making a big deal out of nothing. Nothing happened? Are you kidding me? Mom, I'm trying to be calm here, but this is too much. There's no point in talking anymore. You're just going to make excuses and deny everything. Please don't come near my family. Carter, you can't be serious. I'm your mother. You will listen to what I have to say. So what if you are my mom? If anything, shouldn't that mean you have even more reason to understand what Lauren was going through? You did give birth to me, didn't you? I didn't think it would become such a big deal. I thought Lauren was just being dramatic. You know how young girls can be. I thought she was overreacting. Yeah, sure. I don't see a point in talking anymore. You're probably just going to make up excuses. I don't want to hear it. Don't expect to see me anymore. You're not actually going to cut ties with me, are you? Carter, we're family. See, we can't just abandon each other. That doesn't excuse being a bad person. Families come with responsibilities too. This conversation is going nowhere. I'll be handing Lauren back her phone. But don't even try to ridicule her again. It won't do you any good. Carter! Sweetie! Why don't we have a family discussion? Then just come back home after you're done visiting the hospital. You still need to get all your stuff, too. We should clear things up before you make any hasty decisions, right? That home might not be your home for much longer. Carter's calling his dad. You're Lauren again, aren't you? How dare you interfere with my family? I'll never forgive you for this. 
<laughs> you don't have to. The feeling is mutual. You'll never forgive me, and I'll never forgive you. But as long as we don't have to see each other anymore, I think everything will be fine. It seems like Carter's decided on breaking ties with you, so we won't have to worry about bumping into each other either. What? But why would Carter be calling his father? He said he's going to tell him everything that happened today, and before today too. No way! Your husband has always been nice to me, unlike you. And I still remember the shock on his face when he saw you kick me. After all this, I'm not sure what he'll think of you anymore. Maybe he'll divorce you and throw you out of the house. I'm sorry for being mean, but I secretly hope he will. That way, we can visit his house with our daughter without having to see your face. And it will also serve as some kind of revenge for what you did to me. If you lose both your husband and son because of your actions, maybe you'll finally experience some of the pain that I felt. He'll never do such a thing. How long do you think we've been married? He'll support me. He'll empathize with me. Carter came back. Apparently, your husband wants to say sorry for what you did, even though he had nothing to do with it. He's on his way to the hospital right now. I think we'll be planning our future without you. Why am I not involved? This is about you and me. Tell Carter to pick up his phone. We have some talking to do. No, I'm not going to follow your orders anymore. You're my daughter-in-law. Do as I told you. Daughter-in-law or not, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. And don't even try to get all the others involved in this. They all saw what you did. And I don't think anyone will be willing to stand by you. This time, you went too far. Everyone saw what kind of person you actually are. A violent abuser. What? I am not an abuser! Revenge is sweet, mother-in-law. Especially after everything I had to go through. I'm looking forward to hearing about what happens to you. Oh, Lauren. If what you want is an apology, then I'll give you that. Just let me see my grandchild. Don't let them do this to me. Nope. Not going to happen. Please don't ever contact me again. Our family will be perfectly fine without you. Carter's father was shocked and disappointed when he learned the truth about Monica's abuse of me and our baby. He felt guilty for not stopping her sooner and rushed to the hospital to apologize and comfort us. He decided to divorce Monica, who had shown many red flags in their long marriage. He had tolerated her temper, insults, demands, and manipulations for Carter's sake. But he realized she was beyond redemption after what she did. He told Monica he was done with her, and she reacted with fury and hysteria. She accused him of being unfaithful, ungrateful, and unreasonable. She blamed him for everything and threatened him with legal action and revenge. The rest of the family did not intervene, but they agreed with his decision. They had seen Monica's behavior and attitude for a long time, and they were fed up with her. Monica lost everything. Her husband, her son, and her home. She was kicked out with nothing but her clothes and belongings. She had no one to help her or take her in. And she never saw her grandchild, because Carter and I kept her away from us. <laughs>